Prepare to have your health questions answered here on Safe, Effective, Natural Solutions with Dr. Todd Binkley, owner of Binkley Healing Center in downtown Ventura. Now, here's Dr. Todd. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Todd Binkley, board-certified doctor of non-force chiropractic and practitioner of functional medicine. Functional medicine means identifying earlier signs of stress on all of your organs and tissues early enough that usually you can usually correct them with natural options instead of waiting until you might need surgery or very likely ending up dependent on pharmaceuticals for the rest of your life. Do you know what the two most important things you and anyone you love can do to enhance their health are? Anybody? The quality and quantity of the food you eat and the level of physical activity you incorporate into your daily life. These are almost always the two most important things anyone can do to enhance their health and prevent and reverse chronic diseases like heart disease, diabetes, reduce your risk of most of the things people end up sick and debilitated with as they get older. And this is simply because most disease conditions are caused by things like stress, identifiable nutrient deficiencies, lousy food, lack of exercise, and general neglect. So if you want to be truly healthy, you have to take responsibility for your own health. But you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to do it on your own. I'm here to help. And the functional medicine part, often the focus is on the results of when you go, when we get your tests back, very often I will recommend some supplements because most people have nutrient deficiencies, significant nutrient deficiencies that they just don't, they don't know about it. Uh, most doctors don't test for these things. And identifying specific nutrient deficiencies, deficiencies in essential vitamins and minerals and fatty acids and enzymes, things that your body is dependent upon, not to survive. You can survive. Lots of millions of people survive without them, but they don't, they don't necessarily thrive. So if you want to thrive, if you want to live long and live well, then getting tested, identifying nutrient deficiencies and repleting them, correcting them, restoring them is uh, really the best way to do that for most people. Today we're going to talk about a little bit more about blood pressure. That was the focus of the last couple of shows, but I've got just a few more things to talk about that. But I had a question come in from a listener about menstrual cramps. Somebody had called and asked if I could, or emailed me and asked if I could help uh, someone with menstrual cramps. And the answer is yes. I've helped I don't know. I don't have a count. Uh, Off the top of my head, probably, I don't know, two or three dozen at least patients over the years with menstrual cramps. I see a lot of, well, people of all ages. I treat newborn infants because a lot of times uh, infants who are colicky or crying or for no reason or who can't sleep or not eating properly have tension in their neck. So that's one end of the spectrum. And I have patients that are 100 years old or even older. Um, especially people who have, people are surprised. I mean, obviously, if you don't know, anybody at any age can, can do the blood work that I talk about all the time, in infancy all the way to as old as you, you live. But I also have, you know, patients 100 years or older that come in for non-force chiropractic because even if they have severe arthritis or severe osteoporosis, I don't do any snapping, cracking, or popping, so I can, can and do literally treat people of any age for physical complaints as well as metabolic issues that show up on blood tests and other diagnostic testing. But uh, so I, I don't have a lot of teenagers, for example, or younger women or just, well, women in general of any age who are menstruating that come into me specifically for menstrual cramps because they just, that's, I'm not the first person they're going to think of if they have that issue, I guess. But people who, I guess, so probably mostly people who are here for other reasons, other physical complaints, neck pain, back pain, things like that, um, or perhaps uh, come in for a functional workup if they're, uh, you know, still in their menstruating years, uh, will, uh, I ask them always, it's on the questionnaire, I'll ask them if they have uh, menstrual pain or heavy flow, you know, the details of that and whether or not everything is uh, <clears throat> problematic or smooth sailing or somewhere in between. And so, sure, yeah, lots of lots of women. I mean, menstruation is never going to be painless. Rarely is it completely painless. Um, I've never experienced it, obviously, but uh, based on survey of hundreds of menstruating women, it's usually you know pretty uncomfortable, at least for you know, the first two or three days. But sometimes much longer. Sometimes it's severely painful, 
that's important to know about. And sometimes it's just painful for, for way too long, much longer than just the first two or three days of the cycle. And that's not normal. So if you've been told that's normal, it's not. If you think it's normal because that's your, been your experience for years, that still doesn't make it normal. If you know 20 people who have the same experience, that doesn't make it normal. Normal is normal human physiology. It, the fact that something is common even doesn't make it normal. Lots of common things happen. Lots of people are overweight. That's That doesn't make it normal. Lots of people have anxiety and depression. Doesn't make it normal. So if you have, <clears throat> or you have someone you love, has severe menstrual cramps or you know just any discomfort with their menstrual cycle that uh, they suspect is worse than it could be, then yes, I often can help them. And how, how do I do that? Well, uh, menstrual cramps are the result of the sloughing off of the lining of the uterus. So you're literally shedding living cells and the bleeding that goes along with that. And so that's always going to involve some pain. But sometimes, often, well, people who have severe menstrual cramps, that's almost always caused by spasm of muscles, spasming of the muscles of the uterus, spasming, spasm of muscles in the abdomen next to or near the uterus, spasm of the muscles of the abdominal wall, spasm of the psoas muscle. Most people have never heard of the psoas muscle. And when I show it to them <clears throat> on a model, when I do an exam, the psoas is spelled uh, the Greek. It's a Greek word, so it's spelled P-S-O-A-S. P is silent, so as muscle. This is a muscle that's one of your core muscles. It's a hip flexor. It lifts your legs when you're climbing stairs. It's right next to your spine, so it's really deep inside. You can't feel it from the back because there's other muscles in the way, but you can feel it if you gently, uh, deeply you know, stick your fingers into your belly, going kind of at a 45-degree angle towards the, towards the spine. You can palpate or feel whether or not there is tension in that muscle. And a lot of people are, well, anytime someone has tension in that muscle, they're always surprised about it because they didn't even know that muscle existed. And it is a very common place to carry tension, emotional tension, the tension from stress. If you're stressed by anything, including a normal menstrual cycle, then you can have spasm in the psoas muscle, in the uterus, in the uh, abdominal wall muscles near the surface of the abdomen, all the way around front to back. And even in the walls of the, the muscular linings of the intestines. So your intestines have several layers to them as well. The connective tissue that, that makes the structure of the pipe itself. Then a muscular layer that provides the contractions to move through food, move food through the intestines. And then the innermost lining that does all the absorption of the nutrients and where the microbiome that you hear all about, hear about all the time hangs out. So if you have spasm in any of these muscles, that can be often the uh, overlooked cause of severe menstrual cramps. You know, a cramp, people know cramps and cramps are muscular, uh, but it's not always just the uterus. And even if it is, there are ways to uh, get the uterus to realize that it's, you know, it's cramping more than necessary. Sometimes a little cramping is normal when the first part of the cycle starts to help flush out the endometrium, the lining of the uterus, but sometimes it just gets stuck on or it's cramping too much or because of stress, that normal uh, muscle contraction that is there for a reason um, just gets overdone. And your brain is hardwired to that muscle. It's constantly getting feedback in real time, in nanoseconds, feedback going up and down, up and down between your brain and every muscle in your body. And that means that there is always a way to see if your brain is still fully communicating with that muscle. Well, if the wires are always there, if the communication is always available, then how could your brain not be communicating with any of your muscles? Well, because your body is constantly switching between one mode and another. One mode is to contract muscles to do a job, in the case of menstruation, to flush out the lining of the intestines. But your body also wants to protect itself from any perceived threat. Anything that seems that it might be a threat to your survival or might be about to tear a muscle and your body's natural reaction to that is to tighten up a muscle, to protect it, to keep it from tearing. And often the result of that is a muscle spasm, 
or, you know, in the medical profession, especially people, doctors who are not chiropractors, um, don't understand that, um, chiropractors and body workers use the word spasm a little bit differently. It's sort of a continuum. You can have a continuum of muscle spasm. If you go to an orthopedist and they do a physical exam, they think spasm means full on hundred percent contraction of a muscle or nothing. And there's obviously, and that's, you know, that's not how muscles work. There's gradations of spasm, gradations of muscle contractions that are abnormal. So I'm going to use the word spasm to mean any contraction of a muscle that's not normal, that's not necessary for the normal function of that muscle or that part of the body. And so this happens in the uterus and other muscles in the abdomen. They get stuck on and that's what causes this horrendous pain that's very, very difficult to get rid of. And there's always a way to get those muscles to relax. I'm Dr. Todd Binkley. You're listening to Safe, Effective, Natural Solutions to Almost Any Health Challenge. So how am I going to help someone, if you yourself or someone you know, someone you love who has uh, abnormal or severe or just way too much pain during their menstrual cycle, how do I help someone with, someone with menstrual cramps or with other problems with their menstrual cycle? Well, for the pain part at least, uh, the most important thing is to check for tension on the spine. So these muscles that become tense and then get sort of stuck on for no reason that account for most of the pain, most of the cramping, cramping anywhere in your body is a sign that there's a a lack of the ability for your brain to normally relax a muscle when it should be relaxed. Instead of, it's fine, all your muscles should be able to contract whenever they need to, but they should also be able to relax whenever they need to. All muscles in your body should be able to relax whenever they need to. All muscles in your body should completely relax. Ideally, when you're not moving, if you're just, if you're sitting, you need a few muscles to hold you upright to keep from slumping over. But for if you're lying flat on your back in bed or on the floor, every muscle in your body should be relaxed. Except for your heart, of course, to pump your blood and your diaphragm and some rib muscles to breathe, every other muscle in your body should be, ideally, completely relaxed. So if any muscle in your body is not completely relaxed, if it's cramping, including menstrual cramps, then the first order of business is to see if there's tension on this membrane that surrounds the brain and the spinal cord. So that's how non-force chiropractic works. People ask me that all the time. How can you do chiropractic without any force? I thought chiropractic means means cracking your neck and cracking your back. No, chiropractic means done by hand. Anything a trained, licensed doctor of chiropractic does with his hands to release tension from your spine is by definition chiropractic. Because chiro means hand, practic means done by chiropractic. So non-force chiropractic, you can actually get tension released throughout your spine by first identifying tension on the membrane that surrounds your brain and spinal cord. Your brain and spinal cord are about the consistency of over overcooked pasta or jello even, very delicate, and so they're very well protected. The brain and the spinal cord are surrounded by a fluid-filled sac called the meninges. It's plural because there's three layers to it, but it's basically like a water balloon up in the skull, filled mostly with the jello brain, with a sleeve-like extension that goes all the way down to your tailbone, and it surrounds the brain and the spinal cord. The fluid inside is the cerebrospinal fluid. That's what doctors check when they do a spinal tap. That is where the medicine goes for an epidural around that sac. And so tension on that membrane is identifiable on a physical exam, and there are non-force methods of releasing that tension, identifying it, and releasing it. And when we do that, it makes it easier for, number one, any other treatment you might be doing, stretching, exercises that you might be doing. It makes massages work better, last longer, a whole host of things. But I always start with that because everything else works better when you restore the communication, the ability of your brain to fully communicate with every muscle in your body. And how how's the best way to know? What's the best way to know if that's working or not? All of your muscles stay relaxed when you're not using them. If you have, if your shoulders are up or around your ears and your, 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 your neck and shoulders are hunched forward and tight, if any muscle anywhere in your body is tight when you're not intending it to be, then there's been a loss of communication because your brain always wants to relax your muscles when you're not using them because keeping them tense is a waste of energy. When you have tight muscles anywhere in your body, 
it wastes a lot of energy. It can contribute significantly to fatigue, to tiredness, to a sensation of just having a lack of energy because you're wasting all this energy unconsciously, unintentionally, maintaining these tight muscles throughout your body. So that is almost always reversible. It's always reversible to a certain extent and often completely reversible by identifying the tension, which muscles are tight, sending signals to the brain. It's kind of hard to describe, but it's very easy to demonstrate. Uh, sending signals to the brain that enable it to figure out that this muscle is tight and doesn't need to be. So that also works. We've been talking about menstrual cramps today and identifying tension. Um, It's not so easy to relax the uterus itself, but usually don't need to. Oftentimes the um, persistent uh, cramps are in muscles nearby the uterus, in the psoas muscles that are on either side of the spine, right next to the uterus, Um, in the abdominal wall muscles on the surface of the abdomen, and even in the muscular layer of the intestines. So these are all muscles in the abdomen around the uterus that can hurt people. A lot of people experience the muscle, you know, when they're having really bad menstrual cramps, they feel it in their back. So the back muscles, it can refer spasming in the uterus, can refer pain and cause the muscles in the back to spasm as well. And this is also partly to do with the way the nerves work. So all the nerves in your body start out in your brain. There are uh, 12 pairs that stay up in your head called the cranial nerves that go to your eyes, ears, nose, and throat. All the rest of them come down through the hole in the base of your skull and the brain stem then becomes your spinal cord. Spinal cord goes all the way down to the tailbone and nerves branch off from both sides of the spinal cord in your neck, in your back, in your low back, in your tailbone area to travel to all the other parts of your body. So if there's tension on any of those nerves, it can interfere with your brain's ability to relax those muscles that would otherwise stay relaxed. So identifying tension in these muscles I'm talking about, identifying tension in the psoas muscle, in the back muscles, in the walls of the, in the, the linings of the intestines, and in the abdominal wall near the surface uh, tension can be you can, identifiable. You can feel it, technically called palpation on a physical exam. It's, it's very easy to identify whether or not there is tension there. Either there is or there isn't. And if there is, then relaxing those muscles will often alleviate the menstrual cramps. So that's what I do in the office. That's uh, very effective. I, I can't think of any patient I've had that had really bad muscle cramps that we weren't able to completely reverse it, to completely change their experience, to, you know, reduce their, if they're having, if their menstrual cramp pain is, you know, more than the first couple of days, or if it's a 10 out of 10, as opposed to a five or a six, um, you know, almost every time, I can't think of a time, basically, that we can't, I, I, nearly every time, I can't think of an, an exception, I can almost always find some pattern of tension, it's different for everyone, but some pattern of tension in these muscles around the area of the abdomen in the back, that are tight, that are effects of uh, a menstrual cycle that's triggered spasms and tightness in muscles that doesn't need to be there. There's no, there's nothing to protect. There's nothing that your body needs to use a tight muscle for. They just get stuck that way. And when we find those and release them, then the pain goes. And I can then show you some, usually some stretches or some things that you can do at home to keep them relaxed. So let's talk about that. Anything, anyone can uh, relax the muscles of the abdomen, the lower abdomen, especially if they're having severe muscle cramps by simply using moist heat. So my favorite way of using a, a form of moist heat is called a hot cherry pillow. I carry those in my office. You can look them up online, hot cherry pillows. They're the best. They have their denim bags, red denim cloth bags, handmade by a woman owned business in Santa Barbara. I love supporting her. Um, and they're filled with washed cherry pits from, from the cherry industry. And when you put them in the microwave, this little bag in the microwave for about uh, three or four minutes, they heat up and they actually absorb moisture from the air. So they always come out moist. Even I have some of them that are 10 years more older or more, and they always come out of the microwave moist. And for those of you who don't have a microwave, you can also heat it up on low heat in an oven or even a toaster oven on 160, 200 degrees low heat. Takes a little bit longer. Um, So yeah, that's a great form of moist heat. But if you have an electric heating pad, that's fine too, or a hot water bottle or any kind of thing that you heat up 
um, that's fine. Uh, they don't work quite as well. If you're going to use an electric heating pad repeatedly, I strongly recommend um, heating the electric heating pad up full blast till it's you know till it's fully heated. Then putting it, then turning it off and putting it on your body and covering it with some thick towels or blankets to retain the heat. So if, if you're going to use it repeatedly, so that you're not getting the EMFs, the electromagnetic frequencies unnecessarily from an electric heating pad repeatedly. So heating, moist heat, any kind of heat on directly on the abdomen is a great way to relax cramps in any part of the abdomen for menstrual cramps, for the cramps in the muscles of the abdominal wall near the surface where you can feel your you know, the out the, near the outside of your stomach hurts, relaxing your back muscles. It's not, if you have a sharp pain in your back, that's when you want to use ice instead. I'll often even have people do both. So if you have severe back pain and pain in your stomach at the same time, lie on your back, put an ice pack underneath your back to calm the inflammation that inevitably accompanies pinched nerves and you know, pain in your back, and then put the heat on your abdomen on top. So you're relaxing the, the muscles, the abdominal muscles, and the psoas muscle that I was describing earlier, and even the uterus itself. Even the gallbladder, people who are having gallbladder attacks can relax the spasm of the muscular walls of the gallbladder with by putting a, a warm heating pad on their abdomen. And then if you have back pain at the same time, put an ice pack, a soft ice pack underneath your back. And if that doesn't work, then obviously come in and see me. I've helped lots of people with severe menstrual cramps. I'm thinking of a particular of a teenage girl who came in one time whose cramps were so severe that she was expressing wanting, you know, suicidal ideation is the technical term. She was, I don't know, if her mother found out about it from a friend of hers or a sibling or something, she, she, they were so bad she wanted to, she literally wanted to die. And she'd been to doctors, no one, you know, she'd been to, her pediatrician, family doctor, nobody, no, they gave her, you know, pain meds that would stop the pain temporarily and muscle relaxers. That's the typical medical therapy, but muscle relaxers and painkillers have side effects. You know, muscle relaxers make you, make you drowsy and, you know, just feel sort of woozy and painkillers. Everyone, you know, you hear it in the news all the time. Painkillers are addictive, most of them. And so none of those are really long-term solutions. And there is a long-term solution. So anyway, this teenager, uh, she had, I was talking about this psoas muscle. I'm sorry, most people don't know what that is. Uh, You can Google it. Look up the psoas muscle. It's a Greek word spelled P-S-O-A-S. She had a severe spasm in her psoas muscles on both sides. And that was making, that was most of the cramps that she was feeling during her menstrual cycle was from spasm in the psoas muscles because the psoas muscles are right next to the uterus. They're in the lower, they're right next to the spine. They go along the spine and then down through the hip and connect to the inside of the upper thigh bone and lift your leg, their hip flexors. So when we identified the tension in those muscles, all I had to do was just gently uh, push into their abdomen and fi- she's lying on her back on what it looks like. She's lying on her back on the table and I'm, uh, identify finding gently pushing in to find the space the spot where that muscle is the most sore so you i always show uh, patients how to do this themselves at home as well it's difficult to do it on yourself but it's possible if you practice you know a little help or you can get somebody i'll show uh, your parent spouse a sibling you know anybody else at home can do it with you as well there's always a way to identify where that spasm muscle is and which specific part of that muscle is spasming the most? That's the key. When you find that very worst part and identify it and release it, then you can get the muscle to stay to relax and stay relaxed. So this teenage girl, I believe she was about 14 years old. This 14-year-old girl with severe cramps during her cycle got back to having a normal cycle with a pain level of 3 out of 10 instead of 10 out of 10. And only for the first two or three days of her cycle versus often a week and a half or more. So she was very happy. Her mother was very happy. Both literally had tears of joy at how much of a difference it had made. And this was only after about maybe a half a dozen sessions of non-force chiropractic. Thank you for listening. As always, remember, the condition of your body is far more important than any disease you've been diagnosed with. Do something this weekend to be a little healthier than you were last weekend. Plant a garden. Call someone you haven't talked to in years. Forgive them if you're still mad at them so that you can live long. Have a fantastic weekend. You've been listening to Safe, Effective, Natural Solutions with Dr. Todd Binkley. If you have a health question you want discussed on the show, email your health questions to drbinkley 
at binkleyhealingcenter.com. Take advantage of this opportunity to ask questions for yourself and for your loved ones because our health matters. Join him next Friday at 4 p.m. for safe, effective, natural solutions right here on 98.3 The Word, KDAR.